Close by those meads, forever crowned with flowers, where Thames with pride surveys his rising towers, hither the heroes and nymphs resort to taste a while the pleasures of a court. In various talk the instructive hours they pass, who gave the ball or paid the visit last? And not with more glories than the ethereal plain, the sun first rises o'er purple mane. Fair nymphs and well-dressed youths around her shone, but every eye was fixed on her alone. This nymph Belinda to the destruction of mankind nourished two locks which graceful hung behind, in equal curls and well conspired to deck with shining rings the smooth ivory neck. The adventurous baron the bright locks admired, he saw, he wished, to the prize aspired. Resolved to win, he meditates the way by force to ravish and by fraud betray. Later on, declining from the noon of day, the sun obliquely shoots his burning ray. Belinda now, whom thirst of fame invites, burns to encounter two adventurous knights, at ombre singly to decide their doom, and swells her breast with conquests yet to come. Straight the three bands prepare in arms to join, each band the number of the sacred nine. The skillful Belinda now reviews her force with care. Let spades be trumps, she said, and trumps they were. Now move to war her sable matadors, and show like leaders of the swarthy moors. Spadillo first, unconquerable lord, led off two captive trumps and swept the board, hath many more Manilo forced to yield, and marched a victor from the verdant field. Him Basto followed, but his fate more hard, gained but one trump and one plebeian card. With his broad sabre next to chief in years, the hoary majesty of spades appears. The rebel knave who dares his prince engage proves the just victim of his royal rage. Even mighty Pam, that kings and queens overthrew, and mowed down armies in the fights of Lou. Thus far both armies to Belinda yield. Now to the baron fate inclines the field. His warlike Amazon her host invades the imperial consort of the crown of spades. The club's black tyrant, her victim, died, spite of his haughty mien and barbarous pride. The baron now is diamonds, pours of haste, the embroidered king who shows but half his face, and his refulgent queen with powers combined of broken troops and easy conquest find. The knave of diamonds tries his wily arts and wins, oh shameful chance, the queen of hearts. At this the blood the virgin's cheek forsook, a livid paleness spreads o'er all her look. She sees and trembles the approaching ill, just in the jaws of ruin and codeal. And now, as often in some distempered state, on one trick depends the general fate. An ace of hearts steps forth, the king unseen, looked in her hand, and mourned his captive queen. He springs to vengeance with an eager pace, and falls like thunder on the prostrate ace. The nymph exulting fills with shouts the sky, the walls, the woods, the long canals reply. Thoughtless mortals ever blind to fates, too soon dejected and too soon elate. Sudden these honors shall be snatched away, and cursed forever this victorious day. For lo, the board with cups and spoons is crowned, the berries crackle and the mills turn round. From silver sprouts the grateful liquors glide, while China's earth receives the smoking tide. At once they gratify their scent and taste, and frequent cups prolong the rich repaste. Coffee, which makes the politician wise, and see through all things with his half-shut eyes, sent up in vapors to the baron's brain, new stratagems the radiant lock to gain. Ah, cease, rash youth, desist, ere is too late, Fear the just gods, and think of Scylla's fate. But when to mischief mortals bend their will, How soon they find fit instruments of ill. Just then the baron drew with terrible grace A two-edged weapon from a nearby case. He takes the blade with petulance, And extends the little engine on his finger's ends. This just behind Belinda's neck he spread, As o'er the fragrant steams she bent her head. The pier now spreads the glittering forefex wide, and close the lock now joins it to divide. The meeting points the sacred hair to sever from the fair head forever and forever.
Then flash the living lightning from her eyes, and screams of horror rend the affrighted skies. Then she, raging to Sir Plume, repairs, and bids her bow demand the precious hairs. Sir Plume of amber snuffbox, justly vain, and the nice conduct of a clouded cane. Baron! My lord, why the devil? Sounds damn the lock, for gad, you must be so little plague on it. Tis passengers named Pretty Pox. Give her the hair. It grieves me much who speaks so well should ever speak in vain. But by this lock, this sacred lock I swear, which never more shall join its parted hair, which never more its honor shall renew, clipped from the lovely head where from late it grew, that while my nostrils draw the vital air, this hand which won it shall forever wear. Replied the peer again. What time would spare from steel receives its date, and monuments like men submit to fate. Steel could the labor of the gods destroy, and strike to dust the imperial towers of Troy. And, and hew triumphal arches to the ground. What wonder then, fair nymph, thy hair should feel the conquering force of unresisted steel. He spoke, and speaking in proud triumph, spread the long-contended honors of her head.